There we go. Got a mic working. <laughs> oh, that would have been embarrassing just starting the stream and going like, oh, yep, yeah, mm -mm. not, not today. There's no, there's two Tomb Raiders on Twitch, and they're both using the 2013 game picture. And I have no idea which one they won. Which one is the correct Tomb Raider? Who knows? You just pick the first one. They've even got the level editor as its own game. Uh, and there's also Tomb Raider Gold, which I don't even know, at least from my experience, I've not seen a gold version. I've just seen the, uh... Expansion before that? I think it's just a free patch or whatever. Uh, but not that. Three, two, one. Hello everyone, welcome to the b and stream. My name is b and and welcome to the 27th of September 2021. And if you can't believe it, it's a Monday. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's the end of September. It's not really the end of the season because I guess spring starts in the... I don't know, good people... I always feel like people talk about the seasons and me growing up, I learned that the seasons start on a specific month. Uh, so spring would start in September, then summer in December, autumn in March, winter in June. Uh, I found maybe it's like you can feel a little bit earlier than that, because uh, you get the solstice somewhere in that first month um, in December and June. But that's okay, because no one comes here to see that a stream is starting. They come here to see that a stream demo is actually already playing. So why don't I hop right into it? And let's get underway. So, the last stream I started playing this game and I've gotten five levels in. Or six levels in. This is level six. Uh, this is the very beginning of level six. And, uh, I guess it's good to just continue on and figure out what's going on. But, uh, yeah, today is the 27th of September. It will be the last stream of September. Um, given that September does indeed end on the 30th. There is a crocodile in this water. What is he doing here? I'm not, I'm not going to deal with him. Get him out of there. Get him out of there. Yep, you got it. Yeah, you go. You're aiming at him. And he's moved away too much. I think I've probably got him by now. There's like barely any ground to even like cover in the water as well. It's just over here. Easy. Easy. Uh, but this is the Colosseum tell because it's a big coliseum uh i think from this point on my knowledge of the level starts to dip a bit even though i don't think i've abandoned playthroughs of the game necessarily like in my casual playing but it's just uh the levels start getting a bit larger and larger so i'm gonna gauge how how well i go today but should be all right should be fine we'll see uh yeah it's october oh hi there it's October in the next month, uh, and you know what that means, it's the spooky month. Uh, the entire month gets to be spooky, uh, even though that Halloween is specifically one day, and to be frank, Christmas is two days. But, hey, if people can do it for Christmas, I'm doing it for Halloween as well. I don't care, so. Uh, I don't exactly have spooky music or anything. Alright, he gave me a bit of a love tap there, but that's okay. Lots of these. Tigers? Lions? I think they're lions. Uh, I love the bait. Like, traditional level design would teach you to walk forward and into the Colosseum right there. It's it's big and right there. And this game goes, nah, nah. Big mistake, bro. You're supposed to climb up the outside. How could you not tell? Like, really? Uh, there's nothing behind me, is there? Nah. Uh, nah, I don't think that... I don't think any of those, like extra ledges over there are really important so just kind of edge your way past here and i don't trust myself in any way shape or form uh, uh those astute may notice a save below that's because i took a screenshot in uh for the thumbnail for the youtube thumbnail and therefore i put in another slot because uh this game has one cheat and that one cheat just ends the level it skips and goes to the next level and that's good for me to take screenshots uh it's not exactly good for 
play the game, but if you're one of those people who somehow actually gets stuck in this game, um, and then believes that you should continue the rest of the game instead of just... I don't know, that sounds a bit elitist. But you know what I mean, it's like, there's, there's games out there, and I, I feel like this is actually something that people did do back in the day. Like, the whole point of a cheat code is, like, it's partially the cheat, but it's also like, I mean, it provides... Well, the whole point of a cheat code is mostly for debugging situations and not necessarily to sell cheats or to really, you know, expose your game wide open. Does a lion come up behind you? What am I hearing? Oh, it's the alligator pit. Got it. Uh, I'm targeting the wrong alligator. Can I get the other one? <laughs> Feed the crocs? You probably, I mean, you could feed them. They stand on this one little ledge here. I could probably play smart. Or just actually shoot him because he's just hanging out over there. Cool. Uh, I like this bait. Like, they could have put a spike trap here, but they decided to go with the crocodile trap instead. So good on him. With one little bit of health as well. Like, there's, ba <laughs> there's barely anything worthwhile in here, but the one bit of health makes it. I... Yeah, that's an embarrassing just attempt at climbing the ledge. Yeah, you gotta take your time climbing these ledges. Walk up to the edge of the, the block, and then jump, and then grab. And you gotta do a little side shimmy and get that perspective warping that the textures have as they enter the edge of the screen. I'm looking out for it. I'm trying to spot any of that perspective warping. There you go. Fun climbing for the whole family. Yeah, I got a couple of topics for today. Uh, the typical one of... Um, you know, me, me commenting on F1 every single time as an F1 race. This is race 15 of the calendar, so there's only seven more after this. Uh, that's just a little shortcut back to the actual entrance gate. I don't really think there's any reason to go back. And here we go, the main part of the level, it's so big that the draw distance barely kicks in. But it kicks in somehow. Um, I love this like traditional rendering strat of just like, there's a hard limit to how much gets drawn and I don't care. It's, it's a really weird looking effect, because none of this game is like particularly pitch black. You're going to have to wait until the second game for that one, when they introduce uh, flares. Whoop, whoop, hold on, hold on, hi there, I forgot this guy, this guy keeps harassing me. Can't hit me now, and he's definitely gone. He's definitely gone. Yep. Cool. There's just little lions everywhere. Uh, that's not a lion, that's a gorilla. <laughs> we'll put the gorilla in the lion enclosure. I love this music, man. It's a shame I don't even know the composer's name off the top of my head. I really should. I don't even know like anyone's names in core design off the top of my head. Uh, but legit, legit, the credits in this game, like, when we get to the end, it's like, they're so short. Because this came from that glorious era of games where, like, it still only took, like, 15 people to make a game. And, and like, this is a big game. Like, this feels like technology, like, really went into it. And yet, I can only hear gunshots out of my left ear. That's, that's just because the game does not know how to properly do stereo. <laughs> Blame the game on that one. That's not your ears going bad. That's legit the game. Um, but you know what I mean? It's like, the, like you had... Um, I mean, people will always note Doom, and it's like you could fit the entire credits of the game on the F1 menu. Like, a single screen. Like, just boom. There you go. There's every single person who made the game. You don't have to beat the game to find that out. You just, you just hit F1. There you go. Um, There's a lot of games nowadays that don't even, like, bother, like, playing credits. Sometimes they do. It's, it's like, man, they're long as that games. Like, you know, there's gonna be people out there who just don't even. Uh, so I believe the strat is to drop down. I'm just gonna say it because... I'm just gonna believe that's the strat. I'm not gonna guarantee that's the strat. Uh, so I believe... 
I was thinking there's a... I mean, I know that there's this hole here, but it's all spikes. And you can't drop down into it. So, don't even try. Um, I know that there's all these rocks over on this end. And I'm thinking, is there... There's a lion over here. Hi there. Cool. Hi there. There he comes again. Cool. Cool lion. Always good. Well, he's got a little door here, but that little door is not a little opening. Uh, yeah, that's a bit of a weird one for me. I believe this is also a spike pit. This is just a pit. Oh, no, it goes down. Uh, but do you go down here or do you go down here? I believe down here, because if you're sliding down, that's usually a sign. They do a real good job in this game of not, like, getting your full stuck. So usually if they... Hi there. Usually if you slide down something, that kind of walls off your your opportunity. Uh, your possibility matrix of, like, use thing with thing and occasionally on thing. Uh, this is a like two doors kind of thing, I believe. Or two switches kind of thing. So I believe you gotta hit one. And that opens the far one, which is a bit interesting. And then you open this one. Is there any reason to... Oh, wait, yeah. I'm like, is there any reason you gotta open that one? And it's like, because I slid down from the other ledge. Yep. Alright, well, I'm gonna run past this line and hopefully he doesn't outrun me. Uh, I got one kind of quick topic to start off and that's, uh, I'm a bit of a, uh, bit of a snob when it comes to music albums and, and the such and particularly the album structure. I think anyone who knows me, I'm just like, bro, why did they release these songs in this order when they could have released them in this order? And like, some people probably will like go, hey, you're listening to the same songs. And I'm like, yeah, kind of, but there's a degree of, like, the music listening experience is intended a certain way. And sometimes you feel like, well, you know, you listen to an album, or you listen to, like, some collection of songs, and it's not done in a very particular way. I believe they give you, like, a brief moment to go, yeah, right or left. I don't know if these are time switches or not. It doesn't really make a noise, so... Gonna have to guess. Well, that opened it back up. And that closed the one on the right. So, cool. This is like Doom logic, where it's just like you walk over a ledge in the first level and it just lowers a platform, like, way down off in the distance that you can't see. <laughs> They're gonna leave it open for me? Oh, cool. 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 Alright, alright, we're going quick, we're going quick. Going quick. Going quick. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I fit. It's all good. Uh, but yeah, my so my uh, interest of the week uh, sits on a release from, maybe it was not quite last week, but it definitely came out the week before. There was a release uh, titled Genesis The Last Domino? I think that's the question mark at the end. This is a collection, a, a greatest hits album. Uh, that's kind of in promotion of their new very, very last tour. And if it's not their very last tour, then I don't know what on earth they're doing, but that's the line above me. Cool. Um, but it's a two CD Greatest Hits album. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Like, Greatest Hits albums uh, mostly serve the purpose of, like, someone who hasn't been listening to all their material. 
and to try and get people into the band. And I'm like, sure, okay. Here's a band that hasn't released an album for 31 years. I'm not counting that one. It's 31 years. Um, and, uh... I actually haven't even listened to Calling All Station, so I don't know. I'm ripping it because I, I hear people rip it, but... I actually just... I don't know anything about it, but if, if there's anything with the band... Uh, like, how Phil Collins dominated, uh, the band was on its last... Or on the three albums before, and then... He has an album without Phil Collins. It's like, yeah, I'm. I could probably expect what to what to hear out of that, and, and that's a bit weird considering the other two like did write pretty good songs at various points for the band, but it just seemed that around the end point, I uh, just guess they weren't like sounds amazing, or they were very indulgent. I don't know. So here's a greatest hits album. It's two CDs. It's twenty six songs on. The UK version, and that's the version that I'm getting on Spotify. So I see, okay, like, that's... Is there any reason to be up here? I don't think there is. This is a bit of a weird one where it's like, you're up on this ledge and you really don't know if you're even supposed to be here, but you are. Because if you go over here, there's shotgun ammo, which is not quite... It's not quite the key to success. Like, I'm working my way up here. Oh, I think I've worked my way onto the corner ledge there. Oh, you gotta be a little careful. You don't want to fall back down. Well, down that hole is not, not ideal. Uh, this looks like a save jump. Because I don't trust myself at all. Uh, so two CDs. Uh, I think it's two and a half hours. So it's like, yeah, it's pretty crammed CDs. Um, Genesis have definitely got some longer albums for bands of the 70s and 80s. Like, uh, I think all their albums from Foxtrot all the way to Abacab. Well, all at least 50 minutes, which is, it's kind of substantial. Uh, of course, Light Lives Down, double albums are even worse. Uh, but point is, it's like, yeah, there's a fair bit of Genesis content to, to dig through. So you're gonna, unfortunately, let some people down because it's a long discography. Uh, here we go, here's a ledge. Uh, now I look at it and I go, well, I, I fortunately am one of like two people in the world who uh, maybe not equally, but I do really appreciate their 80s discography. Uh, I don't, I don't think it's as good as, um, you know, Selling England by the Pound is obviously their magnum opus. There's nothing, you know, they can't beat that, but they can do a pretty good job of, uh, you know, of maintaining, uh, being contemporary in the 80s. They, they did a good job of that. Uh, so, given this album, I'm expecting it to be okay. Maybe it's like, maybe it's a bit more of the pop hits of, of, uh... And I'm gonna get the, the track list and just, <laughs> just to confirm my point. But it's like, oh, they probably got the, um, uh, you know, like a bit of a heavy emphasis on the 80s lineup. Uh, turns out, I look at the list of, of, uh, of the songs on the album, and, uh, there are no songs from any of the first four albums. Now, I know the first album's a little bit of a tenuous one for licensing, and, and honestly, it's not absolutely amazing from what I hear. That's the other one I haven't heard. Um, that is not at the bottom here. Gosh, where, which door? I, is the door up the top here? Oh, gosh. It opens a door somewhere, but... <laughs> Where is that door in the grand scheme of things? Um, how about let's save here so that I've got a, a reference point and then I'll do a bit more exploring. Yeah. Gosh, blanking on some of these levels, I swear. Um, so I look at the, the track listing and uh, I've gotten the tour track listing. I don't want the tour track listing. I want the... The album, there we go. There's a documentary as well. Yeah, so... Okay, so the, the, there is the tour, and then there's... The Last Domino... Question mark... The Hits. That's that's the Greatest Hits album. Uh... No. No. So, the album starts off with Duke's End, which is a bit of an interesting one. You start with, like, the last track off one album, which is a reprise of another track. Uh, I don't believe they actually do 
behind the the eyes as well, which is it's kind of interesting. I would imagine a greatest hits album would start off with like the most killer opening track. Uh, probably as someone who's jaded with the seventies, I would go, oh, you know, watch watch out of the skies, like classic. But no, nah, no. Nah. So Duke's end, and then turn it on again, back to back. And I'm like, okay, turn it on was like a surprise, like. To me, it's a surprise hit. Then it goes, Mama, and then Land of Confusion, and then Home by the Sea, second Home by the Sea. So we're six tracks in. We're six tracks in. All of them have been uh, the from the trio lineup. Then we got Fading Lights, which is the last track off We Can't Dance. Uh, and then we got The Cinema Show, Afterglow. Hold on my heart, Jesus, he knows me. So we got two hits of the 70s lineups, and then back in with the trio. That's all. The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, In Too Deep. So that's the first CD. That's three tracks that are from the 70s lineup. But I'm like, okay, like, you know, you got the cinema show. I don't know if the cinema show is including Isle of Plenty as well. There we go. It's over here. Probably isn't. Oh. You know, I thought that was a bottomless pit, and then I was wondering why I hadn't died there. That is a horrendous rock texture, by the way. It's just absolutely abysmal. Hey, that's the that's the error. Uh, but, and then the next CD, I'm gonna go a bit quick on this one. Follow you, follow me. I'm like, okay, follow you, follow me. That's a that's a big hit, like sure. Uh, Duchess, off Duke. Uh, no son of mine. Firth of fifth. I know what I'm like. Uh, Domino throwing it all away tonight, tonight, tonight. Invisible Touch. That's right. That's four tracks off Invisible Touch, back to back. And that's given that they did uh, two of them already on the first uh, on the first freaking like side of the on the first CD. And then last one's I Can't Dance, Dancing with the Moonlit Night, The Carpet Crawlers, Abacab. Now, I don't like Abacab particularly that much. I think that's probably the the weakest one uh, that they've got. So, hey, one track off Abacab, like, I'm not upsetty. Um, basically, the first half of Genesis Genesis, I'm like, sure. I mean, it's a strong first half. But it's like, okay, that's four tracks off Genesis Genesis. That's six tracks off Invisible Touch of an eight-track album. Like, <laughs> legit, there, there are nine minutes of that album. I think it's a 46 minute album, that's 37 minutes just on this Greatest Hits album. Like, it's a good album, but it's not, it's not quite their absolute best. I'd probably chalk it up as like their second best, um, around this point. And then, uh, and then yeah, like you got two songs off The Lamb, uh, three off Selling England, or four off Selling England, so I'm like, yeah, okay, good on that one. None from Trick of the Tale? Like... And that's, that's a surprising one, because, like, you know, that, that's, you know, the breakthrough post-Gabriel era, you know, stuff, and it's just not there at all. So, I look at this, and I go, well, like, this is, I mean, granted, this, this is a, this is less of a Greatest Hits album, and more of a, probably the tour-like album, but... It's a bit of an interesting one. And it got me thinking about Greatest Hits albums in general. And I guess, like, you know, who are they for? Because they're definitely not for, like, well, they're probably for people who don't know who this band is. Like, if you had never heard of Genesis and you were just like, why am I name dropping Phil Collins? And it's like, well, that's because Phil Collins was part of a band. He was part of a few bands, actually. I think he was almost a session musician, but he was definitely part of a band called Genesis. And then... At some point, he made a solo album that just so happened to have In The Air Tonight, which is probably one of the most iconic songs of the 80s. So, you know, that's that's how it, how it goes. They open the door at the end here, but they also give you a little bit of water. Oh, I realize as well, they, got, they have to get you to walk all this way. But. So what's in the water? I've forgotten entirely. Uh, 
But yeah, I guess like these Greatest Hits albums are mostly just to get people interested in the band. Not necessarily, uh, you know, for people like me who have heard all of these songs already. And, uh, judging from the track listing, it seems like the, you know, the, they're obviously not chronological. They're probably going for some, like, tone. I'm not really too sure what the tone is. I'm also, just as a tangent, I'm not too sure what this block is for because you can't push it anymore. Uh, which means I've probably just pulled it out for something else. Probably for something later. Um, or it's a secret that I'm just never gonna uncover. One of the two. Uh, but on top of that, I'm going, hmm, like, if I was to introduce someone to this band, I'd most likely just tell them to listen to one of two albums. I'd tell them to listen to either Invisible Touch or, uh, Selling England by the Pound. Like, depending on, you know, what their vibes are. Or both, because they're both pretty good albums. Um, although I'd, I'd probably lean more towards Duke. Actually, I'd, I'd go with Duke instead. Um... Let me get my, uh, Norman Bateman quote out, you know, <laughs> like, uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was like, I'm pretty sure I don't have to do a time puzzle in order to get all the way back up. Yeah. Uh, but I guess that's, like, another one. It's, like, yeah, like, I remember my dad, uh, you know, he'd have his 6 CD like switcher in the car and have the same cds on on rotation and uh two of the cds i remember were compilation albums one being uh one by the who and another one being uh ah this is the ultimate test my dad ever sees this and he's like yep you can't believe you can't remember what six cds i always had in my car he'd always have abbey road i'd always remember that and born in the USA, and the Pretenders Pretenders, and they have this The Who compilation and the Kiss compilation. I forgot what album number six was, but the technicality. <laughs> but it's like, I guess I've listened to two The Who albums in their entirety. But I've also listened to this compilation album, so I'm, you know, the two albums that I've listened to did not include, I guess, uh, my generation. Um, I did listen to Who's Next Though, so I do know of uh, Barbara O'Reilly and like some other hits. This is not even the way to go. Oh my gosh. So pull this box back. <laughs> Only to then... And I don't have the key, and I know that you need this key in order to continue on. I didn't, I didn't pick up a key, I've only got no. the ski on. So... Did I just hear something? Oh. The heck? Gorilla? Where's a gorilla? Ooh. Why are there gorillas everywhere? Get out of there, gorilla. That's an aggressive going gorilla. Watch him go. He doesn't care what a slope is. Because uh, I don't think there's anything... Like, it looks like it's open. I think it's just... Uh, this probably is open. Like, an open roof. It's just they didn't want to render a sky. Not really too sure of where else to go, so it must be something in that corner room. I activated a switch, but alternatively, someone's probably yelling at me because maybe it's like, "Oh, dude, you're not supposed to freaking pull the 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 um boulder." I call it the boulder, the block, I guess. Uh, but. Point is, weird compilation album. 
And I guess the weird, like, introductions to the bands, but I don't really know, um, you know, what as much purpose there are, there is to compiling music like this other than providing a condensed, essential listening kind of playlist, I guess. But on the flip side, I'm like, you know, you listen to, you listen to Duke without, uh, you know, without Behind the Eyes. Without, um, Duke's Travels. Without a guide vocal. Uh, surprisingly, without misunderstanding on the UK version. I believe the US version does have it. So, there's a lot of, like, songs that I'm just like, you know, all oh, these albums are missing. You push it again? Ah, uh, I should have pushed it again. You know what's the worst part? You know what's the worst part? There's bound to be the key, right here on the other side. Well, there's a room. Well, I can pull this away, so... Can't believe I fell for it. Ah, oh, the key was right there the whole time. So they probably spawned the gorillas because I walked like here, but not because I picked up the key. Ah, oh, well, that's a bit tragic. So my intention is to get five levels done in each of the streams, but yeah, I also kind of acknowledge that the beginning levels were shorter, and uh, but I'll see how I go. Definitely know that the end of the game is a little, little quicker, asterisk. Um, but I guess, yeah, we'll see how I go. There's one more grill. Get in. Uh, but yeah, and if you're a muso and you are curious about this bizarre band that I've mentioned, or if you really, really enjoy this band, I would greatly encourage you to listen to either Invisible Touch, if you do like your uh, very tightly produced 80s pop, or uh, if you uh, want very uh, eccentric, progressive kind of, you know, I'll say soundscapey kind of music. Uh, it's not, it's not like ambient, but it's uh, very like, you know, very full of development and... Um, I, I guess I was gonna say exploration, but then it's like <laughs> it's also got lots of puns in it. But uh, Selling England is a wonderful album, absolutely, absolutely amazing album. Um, or if you want something in between, go with Duke. <gasps> oh, I hit jump too soon. Ah, oh. I, I, for reference, you're supposed to start running and then you hit jump. And at some point, Lara, like, Lara's not going to jump immediately because she needs to kind of complete a run. And that's, that's why you see me kind of, like, nailing these perfect jump timings. I should probably kind of explain the, the movement control. So, yeah, Lara is a bit, like, she's a bit floaty in terms of movement. It's okay, because, like, if I tap forward, you know, she just kind of steps forward. If you hold back or tap back, she just does this jump. That's okay. Uh, when, uh, your jumping if you hold down jump to start to jump up if you hold down jump and then you hit forward or really any direction during her squat she'll jump in that direction but on top of that you can start her running and then you do a running jump uh and that running jump uh you can't start it right away and if you press the button right away it's just you know you'll press that the soonest moment like now i basically was holding the jump button for like half a second there but as long as you start running not do what I did, where you <laughs> jump first. Uh, if you start running and hold down the jump button after, basically, you know, she'll, she'll cover most of the grid. Uh, so, here we go. Blendo uses the key at the appropriate point in time. Congrats. Blendo knows how to use a key. Uh... Yeah, other than that, that's that's my spiel on that. I haven't really been listening to a ton of, like, brand new music, but I did listen to uh, Cassiopeia's third album, which I've actually liked a bit more than their second one. Um, I forgot the name of the album, but uh, just look at the discography and just go by the third one. 
There's that one. Um, I love this, like, doesn't even drain the water. So, just, uh, hope the croc is, hey, he's coming. He's coming. He's definitely coming. I think the level ends here, actually. Yeah, it just goes straight down the tube. Cool. Well, that's one level. Congrats, you have seen level six. And she comes up in this lovely dolphin pool. Or it's sharks, one of the two. Is there something to come greet her? Nah, okay. So this is a bit of an interesting level because uh, it's got a... Basically three keys for the end of the level. So you gotta pick up three keys and chuck them at the end. Which uh, I guess that kind of reminds me of the... Um, uh, of the last level of the last stream for two levels ago uh where you had to pick up four keys one in each of the rooms uh i don't think the keys are particularly well noted in this one but you'll you'll see the puzzle lots of gorillas man lara hates gorillas apparently Oof. we got a little little room it opens up why not one of the doors, obviously, is not going to open up, but that's okay. And we're greeted with another switch. And that opens a wonderful garden. You know, I just realized the last level did not have it. Uh, sorry, it didn't have any of the. Dun 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 It didn't have any of that going on. It's a pretty straightforward level. I love this just like. Magical building that's got like a bit of a... I guess I can hear monkey. There's like a little hidey hole in this room and I've forgotten where the hidey hole is. I would love to use it to hide away from these coolers, but... Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that the hidey hole is just up here. But I'm not too sure if I can reach it from here or if I gotta come back later. I think I gotta come back later on that one. Yeah. That's okay. Uh do I remember where I'm going. Rock'em a dial. Right. Don't give me more of them. Staircase or no case. I'm going without the the industry super fun here. Uh oh yeah, I remember this ground floor area. This is a rather like massive like I guess it's an aqueduct. I guess that's what they're going for. Uh, aqueducts being these like massive like Door players. I am shooting bats instead of the giant lions. There we go. All good stuff. There's definitely items around here, but I don't think any of the important stuff is lying out here. It's not like I've really been needing to use all my health kits. I'm probably sitting on quite a lot of them. Uh, but I also don't think, yeah, there's going to be any reason to come down here in the future. It does have a bit of a, like, almost staircase, but I don't believe you can go up from here. So, best to turn around. I think it's up the staircase. I think it's like somewhere else. Because I know they really want me to go into that room of the garden. Maybe it's down this ramp. Ah, wonderful wind noises, you know. More gorillas! Oh my gosh, Lara. I have collected the piece of the ski on. At what cost? Like... 50 gorillas. 
This is probably the room I'm thinking of where you can climb all over it. Yeah, so what you do is that you see this ledge and you got a little bit of breathing room above you. You can use it to jump up and climb up onto this ledge. Uh, the health pack is probably a huge tell that you can do it as well. Like you see that health pack a mile away. So you, know, you know there's music. Uh, now this, this is amazing. Okay, so you see the statue. The statue of Midas. Uh, now, some of you may go, oh, Midas, that's the Greek god, where he was cursed, where everything he touched turned to gold. Yep, jump on it. And Lara very dies. And yeah, that that's a game over. <laughs> so, yeah, if you don't know that that will happen, then, uh, yep, mm. <laughs> it's a bit of a meme. But, uh, yeah, no, there's a statue up here. Uh, it'll play a bit of an importance, uh, later in the level. I'm not even gonna say, like, tons later, because you know how these level-based games go, but... IROC? That is not IROC. Not every disembodied hand is IROC. <laughs> Isn't there, like, a hand boss in Star Fox 64 as well? What was the game, the first game that invented the floating hand boss? I, it has to exist in like an NES game. It's also made of sandstone. Well, uh, okay, you got me there. This loud music is making me go, did I miss something over in this direction? I'm pretty sure I didn't. Yeah, okay, well, I must be going up the staircase then, because... There's four... four pathways. I know the one at the bottom is a dead end. I guess the one that I just went on is probably a dead end. Just turn the room. And the garden has the statue, but the... you know, <laughs> that statue's for later. Save it as a dollar for later for later. We got a little sandy ground here. Oh, this part. Oh. The memory's coming back to me going, oh, this level, you know, every time. I'm probably going to have a fun time in the Egypt levels coming up. Um, more gorillas. They always come in threes. Now this is, okay, this is the part that I absolutely hate. So, you'll see that they've got these, uh, Y's, and then, uh, I like thinking of it as Y's and O's, but they're, they're actually Omegas and Upsilons. And, uh, Upsilons? I think so. And so the whole point is that they, there's a different pattern on each of the doors, and what you're supposed to do is climb up here, I believe? This is a this is a puzzle and a half. This is this is a double whammy puzzle of a level. They they hit you with two of them. You got that statue. You got that mystery of the statue at the beginning, and then, uh, yeah, okay. Whoop. Cool. Okay. It's like this high ledge there, but the high ledge is not where you go. You're going across the jumps. You're making those jumps worthwhile. Yep. <laughs> now, fortunately, you don't have to really remember them. You, you kind of have to. If you... Ooh, I'm kicking myself tonight. I'm kicking myself tonight. This is what I get for not, like, saving every two seconds, okay? This is my punishment. Should have saved halfway. Every time. I wonder if there's like, uh, saveless speedruns of this game. Or it's like, <laughs> beat the game and you're only allowed to like, save like, at the beginning of a level. Um, or alternatively, you play the PS1 version. Uh, I'm gonna 
miss some of my jump. Okay, look at me. I'm gonna save like a responsible human being. You're welcome. What? Okay. Two more jumps. Two more jumps. Uh, they didn't put anything on top of there, did they? Nah, I don't think they did. Nah. No, I mean. So, alright, so now there's five switches up the top here. Uh, you can immediately create yourself a little shortcut in this wonderful snaking room uh, by just opening the switch. So now I don't have to do the jumps, I've just got a little door here. Uh, what you need to recognize is that, so there were five switches at the top here, and there's five symbols here. What you have to notice is that the Y's are uh, upsilons and they're indicating up. The omegas, I guess, are just down. So, you go... So that one was up, down, 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 up. Uh, up on either end, th three downs in the middle. Uh, these are all up by default. So... Uh, the best part as well is that they're not quite, like, a jump away. Like, if I was to do a jump, you'll see that I'm, like, slight... Well, they're actually fairly off. You're not even going to hear these doors open as well. That's the best part. At least you can drop down. But now... Maybe it's the other way. Yeah, I guess it's the other way. Nice. Time to flip all the switches the other direction. Cool. Cool puzzle. But yeah, so that means that only one of these doors can be opened, but I believe every door has something. Uh, because ultimately, I don't think we actually have to navigate anywhere too obscure. The the statue is the, I guess, the, the door to the puzzle, effectively. That's the end point. And all of these things, all of these little hidey holes, have keys in them. So that's what we're getting. Uh, it's a fun way to structure a level. So what's the first thing in here? L little lion. Lion! Uh... Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. Ah! Okay, this is actually the end of the level. You'll see that there's a door here and it goes three times and then like a bar. So you gotta stick three bars in. So I believe actually this isn't even one of the keys. This is just the end of the level. Cool. Well, I'm glad I got the shotgun shells. Do I even have the shotgun? Did I, did I even find... Oh, I don't, sorry, I do have the shotgun. I don't have the magnum. I've been picking up some magnum clips, but... I'll find a use for the shotgun, don't worry. That's a bit of a jump, I'm sorry. Alright, well, note this door for later. Now for later, for later. Uh, the next one is, I guess, Omega is up, so up, up, down, up, down. 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 Let me see if I can remember it. So, up, up, down, up, down. Well, I think I've got two of them almost good, so. Cool. Here we go. Door is open. Spiky, spiky room right in there. Yeah. So, uh, controversial topic number two is Blendo constantly talking about a certain Formula One race that happened. Uh, this weekend was in the Russian Grand Prix in Sochi, Russia. Uh, and, uh, honestly, it actually wasn't too bad of a race. I liked it. There was a lot of drama. I worry that the commentators stoked a bit of <laughs> unintentional drama. Or rather, they intentionally stoked drama. Um... But, honestly, like, it was a neat race in the sense of, you know, things kept getting a bit topsy-turvy. Uh, wet, sorry, wet weather always does that, I guess. 
So that's always an interesting one. That's a wonderful sound. What was that? Oh, that probably raised the pillars. It did. Okay, so now I've got to nail some jumps. Uh, yep, yeah, okay. Around the outside, around the outside. Uh, but yeah, no, I was... The, the lack of a practice three, and just like... Having, I felt like there wasn't as much practice that really got done. That felt a bit disappointing. I, under, I understand exactly why they did that. But it's also like, yeah, I mean, you know, kind of was a bit blind in knowing who would really end up on top other than going, well, Mercedes is probably going to dominate. I don't care that the commentators keep saying that Red Bull have the better car because they've never had the better car in here by far. And it turns out they still didn't have the better car by far. Good on them. Um... Gorilla. Gorilla room. Gorilla. Gorilla room. Alright. And this is one of the rewards of this uh, level. And if, you, if you look at your inventory, it's a lead bar. And you may remember that that thing required three of those. So, there you go. That's, that's that. For there. I'm just going to jump down here. I think I'm going to take damage. Yeah. That's okay. Pretty quick room. Nothing too weird about it. I think I'm probably taking them in a good order, because I think that room over there leads in a bit of a weird direction. So this is... Oh, that's a fun one as well, the fact that one of these is scratched off. Uh, so just going to take a huge guess what it was. Uh, so something up, down, down, up. The best part as well is I think the draw distance cuts off. Something up, down, down, up. I love how you can actually still just see it over there. There we go. Uh, oh wait, up, down, down, up. Sorry, my bad. Alright, so if it was up at first, then that door should be open. It is. Uh, but other than that, I was happily surprised that the qualifying grid was very, very whack. Uh, me liking George Russell a fair bit, it's good to see him there. Uh, Carlos Sainz, uh, I feel like gets <laughs> shafted on a lot in the commentary. Uh, like, people don't really <laughs> know that he's doing as well as he is. But he's doing pretty alright. I'm, I'm actually really happy for him on that one. Um, I forgot who else was really dominating the qualifying. Like, I guess Lando Norris up front. But, uh, oh, this is a weird one as well. So you pull this pillar, you pull, you pull this block, and then suddenly, whoa, <laughs> you're like, what's going on? So you walk up to the top to find out that the room has suddenly caved on itself a fair bit. There's this giant slope of sand in the corner. And, uh, the pillar in the center is not entirely holding up the center of the room. I love this just, like, off-screen, I guess, like, uh, dynamic nature of the level. Even though it's, like, oh, it's obviously, like, scripted. It's just the fact that, like, you know, it has a cool, neat little concept. Uh, I want to see off this ledge. I don't want to look at the ceiling. Yeah, okay, that is a jump. Uh, do I remember? I think you gotta jump over to the right here, but... I don't remember it being particularly the easiest jump. Yeah, okay. That's where I need to be. And then there's another ledge up here. Uh, I think you do jump in the center because I'm seeing, like, well, that's not a ledge I grab onto. There we go. Uh, and then I don't know if I can make the end there. Or if I... I'm probably going to jump for that ledge over there. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to give me a, a gutsy save on that one. That doesn't look like it's a... It's a doable jump, but... We'll see. Oh, ow. 
How did that end up happening? Okay. One last one. Whoa. I think this is actually the door that exits out. Cool. Yeah, it is. Alright, so this actually puts you on top of the aqueduct. There's wonderful items that I'll definitely ignore because it just adds playtime. We got gorilla. The gorilla. Bats. Bats which follow the ground instead of flying over the water. The gorilla's taking a sweet time getting over here. He's very upset. Good thing he's got a power. <laughs> and his bat. So another gorilla. I'm hearing another one. I know that there's actually a ledge below me, but not like the the underneath. Like there's an actual just ledge down there. Eh. <laughs> eh. Excuse me. Excuse me. I did not ask for your company on this one. I think I've definitely got him. Uh, there's a mate. There's a mate in the water. Hidey hole. Uh, then comes race day, and uh, I think it is a bit weird that like everyone was taking their grid penalties for the the engines. I think that's definitely a sign that like, you know, the the penalty for taking an extra engine is not really like it's a tactic and not a and not a penalty. And that's something that I think you know needs to be addressed. It's just like just get rid of that. Like I think people really just want four engines. Just just let them have four engines. Instead of, like, really cost capping on three. Because people really struggle on three, apparently. Uh, and especially, like, if anyone is in any, like, crash, that part can just be completely gone. Like, just, just, not at all. Uh, so I feel like having four gives leeway for crashes. Not, not because, like, um... What about Dust done the same thing twice? Because you can't climb up there. I'm trying to remember where you go from over here. Unless this is just a, a little side room. This is probably is. It, it is literally just a side room. In fact, it's a side room that's linked from somewhere else. Because you can see it drops down from there. So, Alright, back out we go. <laughs> what is a side room and what isn't? It's a big mystery. Um... I think I've got a hunch that the actual path is... Maybe it is actually the floor below. Yeah, it probably is. Uh, but that's okay. You know, the, the grid order is doing something really weird, but sure, you know, accept it, whatever. Then they go off. Uh, it was kind of interesting seeing uh, the two race leaders of... Uh, Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz like really zoom off and then like the pack starts to just like really fall back. I know Lewis was like not in a particularly great spot from the beginning. This is the ground, isn't it? This is not the ground, this is the ledge below. Wow. And there's more gorilla. And there's just loose medkit right here. Cool. Uh more gorilla. Where is he? <laughs> I hear gorilla. I do not see gorilla. For reference, that crackle is just the sound effects. There's a very, like, crackly, noisy, like, game for some reason. Is the gorilla over here? Or is he on the ground? I think. Oh, no, he's definitely here. Oi, oi. You gotta be careful with gorillas, man. I'm looking at all these hidey holes. I'm disappointed about what I'm seeing in the hidey holes. I've, I've found a gorilla. Well, the bad news is I don't see any pickup here. I know that there's the health over there. But I believe that's something you gotta work f Actually... Yeah, hold on, there's a... There's like ledges over there. I don't think you can climb up anything over there. I 
don't think uh I don't think one of the bars is necessarily in there. So hmm. So I'll go for the med kit. Alright, I remember this being a real gutsy jump. Alright. And then you pull yourself up and you grab this wonderful med kit that's been waiting for you this whole time. While the gorilla dances about underneath you, you slide on over. Uh, other than that, I think the race was pretty alright. It had a bit of uh, fun stuff with the undercut. I th think the pit stops felt very off. Everyone was doing really slow stops, um, and uh, some people were saying that it's because of the, the 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 flicky switch change, where they had to manually flick a switch after 0.15 seconds. Uh, I'm not too sure if that's... I thought that was incorporated like a few races ago, but... Whatever the case, it's like, man, those pit stops look awfully slow now. And I think it's just because there's some manual operation that needs to be done after they put all the wheels on. That's just stopping them from doing anything. They do stuff, and then they're just slow to go. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. If it's for safety, then, like, I'm not really too sure what the accidents were. Yeah, this is what I mean by, like, the level star game very snaky. Like, I've just gone up a bunch of stuff. And then there's those wonderful three platforms. And a bat. It's come to hug my, hug my head. Am I on the platform? No. Cool. The ledge. Oh my gosh, more ledges. I guess because you've already gone so high up, so they need to bring you down somehow. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so now I'm on this little ledge at the top of the beginning of the level. I, I love how it just links all the way back down here with some dramatic music, even though it's one singular lion. Lion! Well, I don't really want to hit that gorilla, apparently. Very, very dramatic music. Just... Very dramatic. Uh, and then, uh, other than that, the race continued, and then it... The big drama is that, yeah, near the end it started getting a bit wet, and, uh... Then you had, uh, yeah, Lando Norris adamantly in the lead. Lewis had pitted earlier, was definitely catching up a ton. And then uh, he had pitted in to go on to the intermediates because it was a bit wet. And Lando was very adamant and going, nah, nah, it's all good. And then promptly, a couple of laps later, definitely skidded. Fortunately, didn't uh, hit a wall. But then it's just like, man, you know, like, definitely hurts to, to see him take a risk and it not working out in a controlled manner. By the way, I love how... When did I save? Because I definitely saved, like, a fair bit earlier. Yeah, okay. Because I was going to say, like, if I, dr I just dropped then, I would have to walk all the way back through... Uh, do the, the jumping in the sandy pillar room in order to make my way back here. Like, that's, that's how brutal this game can get. Uh, with falling down and losing progress. It's... Remarkably brutal in that sense. It's like imagine a Minecraft parkour course made in the most irritating way possible. I did it twice. I did it twice. I I just like my brain doesn't notice that there's a ledge there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, nah. Um, I think the broadcasting could have been a bit better on knowing the overtakes. Like I guess the battle for first and second was pretty exciting, and 
honestly, I think a lot of the overtakes, like a lot of the end placement happened during a bit of the chaos at the end. But a lot of the standing was like, yo, did anyone notice that Kimmy got 8th? Like, it just happened. No one mentioned Kimmy that entire broadcast. I feel. Um, uh, George Russell ending 10th, Alonzo ending 6th, I think? Like... What ass somehow getting his way back up to fifth? There you go. There's, there's the bar, and that's that's your end point. You finally did it. There's the bar, and there's a gorilla directly underneath me. Oh my gosh, gorilla is actually about to kill me. I have ten of these medi packs. Get rid of that gorilla. Don't want him. I love how, like, there's the two dead gorillas from, like, last time I went to this room. There we go. All done. And all of that just to get one more of these iron bars. So, okay. Now, time to go into the one last room. Which is not as long as that one. Don't worry. I remembered one of those rooms was long, and I'm glad that that was... Well, I'm not really glad that that's the one, but that, that was the one. That's, that's, that's how she jumps. That's how she does it. Alright, uh, down, up, 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 up. Well, then that, yeah, it was a pretty alright race. Uh, exciting outcome and definitely things that happened, so that's all good. Um... Yeah, a bit, bit disappointed for Lando at the end, but honestly, like, he didn't, he didn't suffer too hard. He didn't, he didn't end up in, like, a ton's worse place. It's just, it's pretty bad. Going from 2nd to 7th because of a mistake like that is kind of rough, but 7th is still a spot that's alright. Um, I guess just, like, was it his first podium last time? I think it was, actually. Might have been, yeah. So, a bit disappointing, especially given that he was race leading, and he could have. I don't think he would have, but he definitely could have. I think Lois was on his tail the whole time. This is a bit of a weird one, honestly. Yeah, actually, this is a bit of a weird one. Because I'm pretty sure there's, uh... Yeah, you stand here. And the fire turns off. And you're supposed to swim all the way. Sorry, you're supposed to jump all the way across these without letting the fire turn back on which turns on after a bit of time and you're just you're just supposed to be fast jumping across i'm glad this music started playing like during just jumping but sure also was there another alligator in the water i don't know if i'm going too slow on this one as well I am definitely going too slow. Fortunately, you can kind of not stand in the fire. But what's the point if you fall in the water anyways? So... No music for you. Maybe the trick is undercutting your jumps real hard. I don't even know how you're supposed to do this. Okay, let's just be right on the edge here. Because, yeah, if you touch this fire, and I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, if you touch the fire, Lara actually just gets set on fire. And she keeps being on fire, even well after you step off the fire. Uh, you can solve it by jumping in the water, but you're saved before a bunch of perilous jumps. There you go. So there we go, there's the last bar. Now... I'm gonna spend like, I'm gonna waste two minutes to do, oh, there's a rat in the water. There's rats in the water. Why? Who did this? Who put them there? There you go. All right, do I remember the pattern for the very last door? Probably not. Just give me that music one more time. Uh, 
Uh, down, up, 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 down. There you go. I don't need to move these anymore. I've got my bars. Is that really one off? It was. Cool. Very dramatic music. So, the gimmick with the level is that you're supposed to notice, and that's not just any ordinary bar you put in there. That bar's gotta be made out of gold. So the lead bar is like, you can try and use them. And I remember getting stuck on this for like a solid bit of time because I looked at it and I went, eh. It says three bars. My bars ain't working. What's going on? So, let's do the hot, it's a gorilla. Gosh, gorillas everywhere. So, do the run all the way back down, all the way back down to the garden. Because finally I get to use the garden for what it was for. There we go. Almost at the end of the level, don't worry. So in here, got to do a little bit of pro jumping. I don't even know what these uh, little side areas are for. Like those gates there, I can't recall if they even open up. Gotta have this music playing, why not? There we go, give me a save, and okay, so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go up to the hand and press the use key on it, which lets you use the lead bar on it, to which Lara actually metallurges all the bars, if you use it three times. This is a very, like, runescape animation, isn't it? It's just like, ah, oh, yes. Let me put in all the work and clicking object on the object. So that turns each of the lead bars into gold bars. Uh, because the statue of Midas, or really, the Midas touch, turns objects into gold. So, yeah, you turn these lead bars into gold, which I guess... A solid lead bar is like pretty heavy. I forgot where lead is on the periodic table, but I'm like, ah, it's pretty, it's up there. Gold is also pretty up there, like, these are solid bars. And Lara's like, nah, I'm not even leaving with the bars, I'm just gonna stick them in a wall. I assume it's, it's probably not too hard for like ancient times to make these like specific things where it's like there's a switch. And you gotta, like, you gotta stick an object of a certain size into the, into the spot. And then it needs to weigh down something. Like, that's probably what's what's the case. Um, so it's like, oh, well, you can't stick in a lead bar because the lead bar doesn't weigh it down enough or something like that. Uh, but then you could just be like, well, I'm just going to stick a uranium bar in it. There you go. Problem solved. I don't know if uranium is more dense uh, as a bar, but... Yep, you can use the, the gold bar on it and she sticks it in there. And now you got to do it two more times. Well, my rock didn't give me this. Bloop. <laughs> Definitely take a bit longer in these levels than I actually expected, but slide down and there you go, level done. Ah, uh, I remember this level and I don't like it a lot, because water, and rats, and also just like block on wall, that happens a bit in this level. I remember not having a particularly great time with it, but I hope I'm pulling this block the right way, I'm probably not.
Yep, I definitely need to push that block instead of pull it. Done. That's okay. So yeah, these are, uh, I believe, this is like the sewers. Because uh, ancient Greeks even had to poop somewhere. So, uh, yeah. There's a bit of variety going on in these levels, even if it's uh, like two levels of, or three levels of sand in a row, and then uh, suddenly poop. But it's pretty alright. I forgot how long or short the last of the Greek levels are. There's 15 levels in the game, and five of them are in this Greek chapter. Um, so they're definitely... Oh, I need to push block one more in that direction as well. Cool. Maybe this level isn't as long as I remember. I can think of a few parts of it, but I can't think of a ton of parts of it. There we go, so pull the switch, and... They let in the rats! They pray at night, they say goodnight, uh, the rats. I don't know the words, I'm sorry. Ooh. There we go. And welcome to the main part of the level. It's so main part of the level, they played the main menu music on this part of the level. Uh, there's a lot of ways to go in here. I'm trying to remember where specifically they want you to go off the top of my head. I know there's definitely something in the water, but I know there's little crocodiles in here. There he is. But you got this tiny little hole that you can go in. That's a secret, I guess. Cool. Okay. It's got magnum bullets. And crocodiles chasing me in here. Hi there, crocodile. See ya. Alright. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna get out of here. I guess there wasn't anything important in there. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember specifically where they wanted you to go. There's a lot of, like, places to go to in this one room. I think the main goal is that a lot of the rooms are closed off unless you climb up to the top. And that's a ledge you slide down. So you need to actually climb up in this direction. Uh, I think the ultimate end goal is to end up over there with a specific key. Uh... So, I believe you go up this way. Where well, we're definitely going to be greeted by something. Hey! Oh, I'm coming at him. I'm coming at him. I'm coming at him. So, alright. So, the different weapons. You switch them. It's got ammo. And he's gone already. <laughs> that was it. That was all I needed for. Um, but yeah, like, the different weapons. They definitely kill things quicker than uh, Lara would uh, normally. How do you get out of here? A little, little drain pipe. There's rats. Oh my gosh. They're the rats. Get them out of there. Yeah, this is a, I guess, um, I don't know if this is a, a trend in the 3D platformers of this time, but what's with, what is with 3D platformers and bizarrely complex water levels? I feel like, um, maybe not this game. One of the later Tomb Raiders. I'm thinking Tomb Raider 2's got a kind of convoluted water level. Um... Tomb Raider 2's actually got a handful of water levels, doesn't it? It really does. Like, you're in you're in a Sicily, sorry, Sicily? Venice for a fair bit. And you got this like weird hybrid where it's like you're driving a boat and then like swimming underwater and climbing on the top. Uh is there any reason why I am climbing all the way to the far end? Only just to hit a slide? Like the far end is just a slide. Trying to think, like this end is literally just a pit as well. Like, I guess I can go over the way. Oh well. Anyways, I got the key, but there's also a switch in that room, and I can't remember for the life of me whether I need the switch. Uh, all the way up. I don't 
don't think you actually need to move the switch just yet. Rats everywhere. All right. Uh, you can get back up over in that direction, and I don't actually think there's anything on the ground here. But I think given this key, this rusty key, I think opens up one of those two doors. So I think that's probably what I need to do. Use the key on the doors. So yeah, other than that, uh, there's the usual uh, bit of game playing um, that I've been doing. Uh, what games have I been playing? I think I mentioned uh, Bioshock Infinite last time, and uh, I definitely have not been playing Bioshock Infinite since. What I have been playing is Middle Earth Shadow of War, the sequel to the, I guess, critically acclaimed Shadow of Mordor. I love this bit where it's like, it looks like you have to climb around the outside, and then it's like, yeah, nah. Like, <laughs> Just don't even. There's a reason why there's ledges up here. I think one of the level designers just hated, like, having to go around here. There's another key. Okay. More rat. There we go. So you see there's a door over there. Um, can you make this jump? I think you can. There you go. Uh, but yeah, no. Middle Earth Shadow of War. I think I've played it for maybe about like 10 hours. Um, yeah. It's it's definitely, it's as I remember. And they're not really, there's actually not a ton of like new stuff. Like they've got the, I know they've got the, the conquest these systems. So what you do is that not only are you fighting these, uh, these captains, these orc captains, but you're also, uh, I guess, converting them to your army and then that opens up some interesting possibilities of like oh like you know if you've got a uh, you know can you kill them without or can you weaken them without killing them uh and then like converting back to sorry can you can you like you gotta weaken them and then you gotta use your convertibility without getting wrecked by like someone else in the the area uh you can send people to like backstab other captains or uh I guess, like, gain intel or back you up when you go fight them. Um, so, that's definitely... I don't... I don't know. Whoop. Hi there. Yep. Okay. He's about to kill me otherwise. There's no medkit button, by the way. I'm not... I'm not just, like... Using it. Oh, is he gonna go away? He's bound to be gone. Like, there's nowhere else you could go in this room. And he's just gone. He's out of here. Um... It's definitely a bit of a complex system going on with the, uh, I guess with the, uh, I don't even know what they call it, the Nemesis system. They just, they give it a one word name. I'll, I'll give it that, but, uh, the mechanic is fun to get back into. I've definitely kind of enjoyed how it's working in this one. And I actually f am finding the game a fair bit harder. I don't know if it feels necessarily the fairest. Some missions I absolutely get wrecked, and some missions I do just breeze on. I'm not really too sure what's breaking down the, the difference there. I think that's more magnum ammo down there. Or oh, that's actually magnums, but and I'm still actively ignoring them. Cool. Oh, I lied. There's, there's two cheat codes in this game. I remember one's a level skip and one's a give yourself ammo. Kind of one. There you go. <laughs> uh... I love the how like this one slope is just gonna it's just gonna drop you down and then it's like all right what am I hearing? And crocodile, there he comes. Interior crocodile alligator. He's definitely he's definitely coming for that booty. There's another one. There's three of them. That's a rat. Not an alligator. That's an alligator. Cool. 
Um, so yeah, the, the system's pretty alright. Uh, for those who haven't played the game, it's basically a Batman-style uh, attack and counter kind of combat system. Um, there's a fair bit less emphasis on stealth, but definitely the stealth is still there. But stealth is more like a, an opening and not a you know a requirement, which I actually kind of like. You know, that, that's kind of how stealth should be in a lot of these games. It should not be the alternative strategy you always do. It should be, I, like, I fight a bunch of people without, like, or rather, I get the first hit on a bunch of people. And I get to choose who I get to first hit. Like, that's, that's kind of the point. Uh, I'm not really too sure what you do when you're low in health. Like, run away. And then just, like, feed off one guy and then come back. It feels a bit of a cheap strat. I, I really don't know if... I'm actually supposed to be doing that or not. Feels very weird. Um, there's the, the, like, the convert ability, which you, well, it's not quite convert, it's just, uh, what's the term? Drain? You get that, like, kind of early on, you can use it as a combo bonus. Um, so that's alright. Uh, but ultimately, is there a switch that I'm missing? Because, like, I'm climbing over this door at the end. Oh, there's a switch there. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, I feel like it's a bunch of mechanics that kind of fit with each other, but I've actually, like, I've already gotten all the skills in the game, and I've just got, like, all these, like, perk bits that aren't really changing my playstyle that much. Um, it's a bit weird how, yeah, like, how s there's so many... Oh, I love this freaking, like, bit of spikes here. Because it's just, like, it's not even... It's not even fair, these spikes. You can't even, like, attempt to, like, drop down. It's just, like, you know... That rat is coming at me, bro. Cool. Cool rat. There we go. Uh... Drop. Drop. More rats. Alrighty. We keep going. There's more greenery in here. Uh, is there something in the bottom of this water? It's 100% like poop water, but... You know, that's why you do it. There's an like interior crocodile alligators. Oh, he's gone. He's, he's out of there. I'm gonna come back because I'm not targeting them. They're gonna come back or they're gonna they're gonna cycle around there until I dip my toes in the water and they're like, ooh, look at that. It's a person. Yeah, I thought so. I definitely got him. Is his pal still in there? There he is. I'm just gonna swim past him. So what's over here that I've like either remembered or not remembered? Uh there's a little opening back out in here. Cool, so why did I go through all this effort to get in there? Just to get into this room. Oh, because you can't... Because you can't get back out of here. Nice. Nice. I've forgotten why this room has all this platforming as well, because it's not even like... Does it lead? No, this is, that's just to get back down. So I actually just missed out on... Getting out of there. And there's a key in the middle of those two. So... Very cool. I'm glad I made this jump just to have to do all this platforming again. Actually, even better. Did I save? I'm probably just going to load a save. Yeah, it'll be easy to just navigate from up here again. Alright, don't jump in the pool. Because I've got to get a key. I like this uh, this kind of uh, mossy texture as well. Because 
it definitely hints at a part of the level which is that i'm definitely going to be raising the water level and all the mossy bits uh of where all the water level actually sits up it's a really like nice like attention to detail even in like you know blocky <laughs> blocky diagram level design but i guess that's one kind of nice quirk about this game is that like you know there's a lot of things that are kind of heavily based on uh something quite real which is uh i guess something you wouldn't well i guess in 1996 you'd expect and then retrospectively you'd forget but that's that's what uh this game kind of pushed for that's pretty cool uh yeah i literally just didn't do this instead of like jumping into the water like an absolute chump be the kind of guy who jumps in still after opening that up but nah. so i believe this is uh that's not a rusty key that is a proper legit silver key i've got another rusty key and i believe that opens up another door uh, but the silver key is hi do you have anything better to do you're just chilling here all the time man ah he's probably gone now yeah he just he's going So yeah, I don't think this room actually has any importance right now, but you can see there's another key over there. Oh, hi, yeah, I forgot I didn't take out the crocodiles. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So, exit out of here, and... Uh, I'm actually gonna exit out over near here, because this is where all the, the platforms are. Uh, but other than that, I feel like I need more playtime with the game to really understand its mechanics. Um, I remember that the game controversially had microtransactions when it came out, and it had a very horrendous uh, grind for the end part of the game. So I know I'm not up to that point. I definitely can sense it coming, because they kind of left a story point kind of lingering on me. So they're like, oh, you must, you gotta, uh, you know... We must build an army and take on uh, Sauron. And then I like beat up this one fort only for a guy to basically just do some exposition saying, yeah, we've got a mechanic. You can play around with the mechanic. Oh, why did I... I, I haven't even saved as well, so I've got to climb all the way back up. Oh. Um, so the whole, like, I can make my army and then fight a guy online, or at, or at least his online army... His online version of the army. And I'm done. I don't even feel like I'm really fighting his army. I feel like I'm just fighting like an instance. Um, and then uh, I get experience points and item drops. And this is the part where I'm kind of like, I'm a bit, I'm really on the fence about because I'm not a big fan of randomized stat objects in like these types of games. It feels very odd and very arbitrary to me. Like, I look and I go, okay, well... And, and the worst part is that, like, I'm not really toying up any stats. I literally have... Like, your character has the same loadout. So there's no, like, variety in the types of items you can have. There's one bit of variety, and that's... Instead of the bow and arrow, you can have a throwing axe. All of its abilities are the same, but I believe the arc is a little different. That's the one catch you get. That's the one bit. Uh, so I've forgotten if this is, yeah, this is another one of the rusty key spots. Because we go up, up and above on the path to the left. So, rusty key. Do, 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 do. And it opens up and it goes down. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, cool. So, now it's at this point in the level that you go, oh, what do I do? I, it's, it's down there. And so I, I kind of hit that earlier, but basically I'm going to raise the water level, raise it. But yeah, so you got to get two keys, I believe out of two like hidey holes. The key that I just got, you need to have the water level lowered. So I kind of lured you over here because you do need to pick up two keys. And one of them, you know, one of them's to, just to my left. And one of them was up here where you raise the water level. 
But you actually need to raise the water level only for one of those. Uh, so, up here. Oh my gosh. It's two times in a row, man. Oh, this is why. This is why. I'm taking my sweet time playing this game. Worst part is that this is my only... <laughs> this is the third level of the, the stream and I'm already an hour 35 in. Jeez. I want to see if I can finish Greece at least. Like, I'll get that fourth level done. I don't care. Don't care. Uh, fun fact, by the way, to anyone who is on my stream. Uh, if you live in... Anywhere that's not... Uh... Sydney, or Victoria, or South Australia, I think. Uh, well, really, uh, the next stream's actually going to be an hour sooner, because Daylight Savings uh, starts um, on the first Sunday of October. So, uh, so yeah, to, to anyone I know, just noting the stream times, so yeah, that's going to be the case. Um, I'm keeping to... I guess, whatever my local 8.30pm time is. It's, it's just easy on me. That's all it is. Alright, let's not fall down. So I believe the lever's just here. It's it's not particularly hidden. It's just kind of like at the back. And I guess you don't see it as you walk into the room. But yeah, you hear it. You don't particularly see it. And I don't actually think there's anything up above here. The fact that there's a hole there is really mean. But, uh, yeah, you can raise the water level, and you can definitely feel it in this room. Because suddenly now it's like, it's right up to your teeth. And yeah, it affects a handful of these rooms. Uh... By the way, uh, when there's water, you're not able to pull the the, uh, the levers that are horizontal. But you're able to pull other kinds of levers uh, that are vertical in the water. And if there's anything on the ground, you can still pick it up. Uh, you just gotta kind of edge your way into picking it up. Yeah, they put one of the, one of the keys here. Now so I've got this room with a little alligator. How nice of them. Uh, so, yeah, there's a, la there's a door over here, and I'm actually curious what's going on with this door, because there's a key behind there. Um, my brain's made me think that there's only two keys. Also, yeah, I, I think you could probably jump up here. Normally, but let me just, uh, yeah, start burning my keys. Maybe I do need that other key. Yeah, I guess I do need another key. Because the gold key ain't doing it. No. no, she doesn't want it, so... Okay, well, I guess i got to figure out how to get that one key. Uh, I've got an idea, which is the upper parts of that room, and in order to get back to that room, I guess I could just go through this way, can't I? Through the little hidey hole. Past where the crocodiles spawned, but definitely I'm well past where the crocodiles are. And now, I can swim up to the top of the room. There we go. There's a rat up here. Of course there is. We got shotgun shells and medikits. Is that a bat or is that just the crocodiles having a fun time outside? There's another rat. Right? Hmm. <laughs> the cogs are turning my head gone. Where where did this open up? Oh wait, it's, it's, hold on, is that open on the other side now? I guess it is. Cool. I'm gonna swim down. I'm gonna use a med kit, because <laughs> that crocodile is chomping at my legs a bit too much. Back up. It's open now. Mm, not too. Sh it's not open. 
it's it's rendered like it's open what yeah that's that definitely did not open yeah okay all right i'm taking out these crocs okay get him I realize I've mapped the controls to my analog stick as well. I think this game does support the analog stick on the PlayStation 1 controller, but uh... I feel like the D-pad is how you should play any game with tank controls. I would not trust a, a tank control game with a stick. Hmm... Must be a lever or something in that room. There's another crocodile. Oh, maybe I've got I've got one last idea. And I don't have, I don't actually think I have to lower the water level on this one, but I'm actually, I'm not too sure. Because I'm like, this room does go up. So I don't think this would change in any way, but... I'm curious if there's a, actually a hidden lever or something, and I just like completely missed it. So I'm going to save out here just so I know I can come back. Tomb Raider, even a guy who's played it like five times still can't remember where everything is. Oh, that's good fun. Uh, other than that, I've been playing my regular affair of uh, still working my way through Picross 3D again. I enjoy that game. And Forza Motorsport 7, where it's just the grind of doing levels. Really, just do some races, get some cars. Um... I might be nearing the end, uh, oh, I've probably got a lot of, like, legendary, like, level 5 rank cars. Uh, yeah, is there a, um, a lever, like, hidden in here, or... There's that one. There's the med kit around the back. My brain's thinking, like, oh, was there something involved with this, like, block here? I don't remember there being anything there. Although I also don't remember. Nah, yeah, yeah. That's where Croc was, and then, and then, yeah, I just continued on, and there wasn't really anything in the way. Tomb Raider is making me tomb scratch my head. I love that jump every single time. Every single time. <laughs> yeah, every time. Oh no! I can't demonstrate what was in the other room because I specifically saved all the way out here. Ah! Oh. All right. Well, I know I grabbed one thing in that room, but yeah, I guess the question is: what's in the next room? I guess I could swim all the way back out, can't I? Maybe that was the solution. Because I never exactly swam down here, which would now let me swim up this room. 
Well, the guy swimming up this room means nothing because I can't climb on the ledge. So that's where they catch her, I guess. But yeah, one of the keys was there. And the other one is through the other side. And this is just where I would come in, which I can oddly swim back. So I'm glad I made all those jumps just to get back up here. Hmm, okay, now I'm legit scratching my head. I'm going, why is that other silver key, like, not accessible? And why is this croc, like, constantly harassing me? Hold on, wait. Did I just... Oh my gosh, I'm blind! I'm blind! There's a lever right there! And the croc's still nibbling on my toes. Get out of here, crocodile. I'm picking up the key. There you go. <sighs> so close. So close. And then I wandered around aimlessly. That's okay. Alright, there we go. There we go. Key number two. Oh yeah, this level keeps going on for a moment longer. Not tons longer, but just a little bit. Enough to make you go, hmm, there's a door. I wonder where I go. There's a bit of a weird ledge here. Yeah, you can see it. that's where you pop the key. And uh, there's definitely a gorilla up there. They just hide a gorilla, like he... <laughs> He's obviously there, but Lara's not gonna notice it. Oh gosh! Ooh. That was a close one. Uh, I don't know why I hallucinated that there was a health pack over there. I've been meaning for a health pack, I guess. There we go. Drop down. Ah, yes. One last trick. This is a bit of an interesting room, this one. When you got Lion. Massive, like, entrance into the room, though. And then you got the switch. What the switch does is it opens up a room with... Way more lions. Who, who are having a great time jumping over each other. I'm probably going to use a small health on this one. Get him, get him, get him. There we go. This is a block, isn't it? This is actually something I can pull. Nope. It just looks like it. It's Ch Chuck Tester. That's who it was. Gosh, I thought I could... This one I can pull. It's got the little tab symbol on it. That's definitely an end level drop, isn't it? So what was in here? A switch. Did they release more? Oh. Ah, I see how it is. I see how it is. So I've got to pull the block all the way through. This is, uh, I don't, I don't think it's worth our time, to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to ignore that. That's bound to just give me, like, magnum ammo. There we go. 
Okay. And Lara continues on swimming for the very, very last level of the Greek chapter of the game. Uh, now that's, yeah, that's one of them horizontal levers. So you gotta drain the water somehow. Unfortunately, there's a vertical lever down here. Uh, but yeah, no, I've got to find out uh, more games to, to play and other kinds of just things to encounter and experience. I don't know why my control... There we go. I don't know why my down was not working, but... Lara's got a big breath. Big chest for the big lungs, you know? That's, that's how it works. Mr. Croc! I'm gonna miss the Crocs once I'm done with the Grease chapter, I'll tell you that. Alright. Uh, we've got one request for this game, it's called Fewer Sewer Levels. What do you mean, we've had two. Exactly. I just want more sandy ruins, you know? And then they, they listen to you because the next bit's in Egypt. Oh. Oh. Can I make this jump or? I can, yes. There we go. You gotta watch out for them blow darts. And then, uh, that. Drains a bit of water in. What's the purpose of draining water in? Uh, I think that was just always there. <laughs> just never went in. Uh, I Yeah, I can't remember the beginning of this level. I'll tell you that. It's obviously not like... It's gotta be something to go back. With a higher ceiling. But no, that's the beginning of the level. Hold on. <laughs> There's no reason I'd need to be back here with a raised water level. So what am I doing in here with a raised water level? Oh, it was a block. Oh, that block was probably blocking where health kit was. Got it. Oh, more swimming. I saw that. There we go. More lever. And more swimming pathways. I believe this actually like sucks you all the way down. You remember like playing Majora's Mask and it like they'd have a level that's just like this where it's like you pulled. I know how long this like tunnel is as well. It's amazing. Like the whole meme is that the tunnel's too long if you try to swim it. Um, but like yeah, the the Great Bay Temple. It's full of just like, just like tunnels everywhere. It's a real fun one to like try and figure out. Um, I've only played Majora's Mask twice, so I can remember it, like, feeling kind of hard to play, but I don't actually remember it being, like, too too tough. I think people really, like, chalk up Majora's Mask as being, like, a tremendously amazing game, but I think one, one problem that Majora's Mask, like, suffers in is that the scale is, like, quite odd. Like... And, and I, I know, like, that's that's probably, like, you know, unpopular opinion, how they knock on Majora's Mask, but you know what I mean? It's like, there's a lot of... Uh... I should have been saving, shouldn't I? That is this level, but... Yeah, mm, I should have been saving. Just hit the wrong button while trying to jump. That's that's all it was. Um... <laughs> But, you, you know what I mean? It's like, I think there's something real, like, real well done with how the pacing works in Ocarina of Time. And then Majora's Mask comes around and, like, it does take a bit of time to get to, to Woodfall. That's okay. 
but it also takes a fair bit of time to get to the next two dungeons. And then the last one, I don't know, it feels a bit quicker. It actually, it does feel a bit quicker to get to the later dungeons. And I think it's just because, like, everything in Termina, it's like, it does feel like side material. Like... Yeah, like, and, and then that's that's what makes it feel quite odd, is that the game is probably very, very tough if you don't know where things are. And then when you know thing, where things are, like, you're playing a lot of stuff that's got nothing to do with your, um, you know, your main objective. Like, here I am throwing bombs into things because a loving couple that's definitely just a reused uh, model from Ocarina of Time, like almost all the game is. Um... And yeah, it's it's a bit of a weird one to me on that one. Uh, on the flip side, I really appreciate how they've contextualized a lot of like you know the side actions, and it's not just like oh do it for a piece of art. It's like oh do it because like this guy actually then goes to a place, and then this guy who goes to a place like it's only a handful of quests I even do rely on that. But even then, it's it's nice to have some cohesion in the world like that. Uh, but I think it's uh, just the part that. It is your own pacing that's kind of making that. And so because of that, your actual quest line becomes rather muddied. I do remember this bit. Where this guy is just, just pain. He's not, he's not going, bro. He's gone. He's gone. He's disappeared. This is a fun bit. I gotta jump through and not get the skewered. I think there's... Are there more of them? Oh, hi there! Sure. Cool. Thanks, Crocodile. Appreciate it. Uh... Oh, I've got to work my way back up to the top. But good thing there's all the shotgun ammo down here. Just in case I need to use a shotgun later on. Which I will. Yeah. Fortunately, they've given... Yeah, I, I remember this level's a lot more linear. Ultimately, you're just kind of working your way through some smaller rooms. Rather than... And this thing. Um... <laughs> Couple of death traps here and there, why not? It's been a while since we've done the death trap. Uh, I really don't trust these jumps. <laughs> oh, I told you. It's a very precarious jump, so yeah, I remember this one. So, the shotgun ammo, I'm, I'm like, I barely use my shotgun, but like, what is this? The worst part is I think this hits you. Yeah, this hits you when you're on the ledge. So you can't even line up your jump. I think he's just got- Oh! oh. <laughs> Hit down way too many times. Uh, I, I think I- yeah, I mentioned it a little earlier. For reference, I am just playing on an Xbox One controller with uh, just DOS box key bindings um, on the controller. Um, and yeah, this is all in DOSBox, which I I really do appreciate DOSBox and the fact that this thing works nicely on it. Um, it's kind of interesting as well, because there is a, I guess there's a Windows 95 installer on the disk version. Like, uh, if, for reference, I've, I've not gotten this to, like, specifically work, but if anyone has got the uh, version of the game that requires, uh, or that allows you to, you know, have the wonderful PlayStation audio playing. Note that I think you can actually, like, you know, boot off it and... Well, not boot, uh, but... It's like a Windows 95 style installer for the game. Um, which is weird, because I'm pretty sure it still just runs in DOSBox mode. Or DOS mode on, um, Win95, but... Yeah, nah, I, I'll, I'll gush about this game a little more, but I'll definitely say, yeah, there's the Greek... Levels here, I remembered them slogging, and they definitely slog. They definitely take 
a fair bit of time. And yeah, it's strange. The beginning of the game, four levels, but also the shorter levels. Uh, the next two locations in the game, three levels each. But then this Greek bit, it's five levels and they're all reasonably long. I did one at the end of the last stream and this whole stream has been the other four. Maybe I do two shorter streams, I don't know. Actually, I feel like I'm supposed to be in that room. Just the floating spiky things, you gotta watch out. Yeah, isn't there actually like a ledge for me to climb out over here? No, it actually is just a bit of sewer ground to catch me in. Mm. Yeah, okay, cool. Oh, clip my hair on it. That's okay, I've got a med kit. I'll use my med kit for nefarious purposes, such as healing. See, so yeah, why did I raise the water level? Because if I try and go back in there, I don't know why I've completely blanked out on like what the layout of that room was. But I'm pretty sure, like, was it just the grabbing ledge? It was just the grabbing ledge, and then I pulled a lever and there was water. Okay. Yeah, so I must be going back. I should probably not just kill Lara like that. Uh, instead, drop down gracefully down here. So I definitely elevated the water level here. Do I go, I go all the way back. Got it. Cool. Cool. The fact that it's taking me all the way back means I've probably done something right. I don't know if it's doing any non-Euclidean, like, you know, sliding you over to somewhere else. Uh, so I believe this... Is a new room, is it not? Nope. That's not right. Uh, and that's just the switch. Why is it taking me back here? That's. I don't know why I'm getting very disoriented. <laughs> Swimming levels, am I right? I think... F no, actually. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, fortunately, there's not many other swimming levels in the game, and I'm like... I don't know, man. I think there actually are. So what am I doing back in here? Because obviously this room doesn't have much, and then that's the beginning of the level. So what am I doing back in here again? Why... why did that take me back to Paradise City? Where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Oh, it's very mossy. Does me pulling this lever, like, botch up anything as well? Because now I've pulled it twice. And it's gonna take me all the way back to the other side. It's definitely got the water lowered, so... It's not ideal. It's not as ideal. So with the water raised, maybe I'm just blind and I'm supposed to be... 
swimming somewhere. But I'm not. Oh, the camera did not have a fun time on that one. That's what's got me very confused. Either there's something hidden in the one room way up the back. Like, either there's something in this room that I was in. Ah. I'm just going to take a legitimate check in this room. So this was just the switch. Yeah, that was just the switch. Okay, and then I pulled the switch, and then there's nothing else for me to do up there. And there's no like ledge above me. Hold on, why am I blind? Why am I absolutely blind? There's, there's even a rat up here. This is, yeah, okay, cool, cool. I can't, I... I can't even, I'm not, I'm not in the zone, but... I will finish this level for the sake. Alright, so, new room. New lion. Why not have another lion? A lion a day keeps the doctor away. If you're not eating an entire lion. Are you allowed to eat lion? I don't think you are. Someone's gonna say lion's an endangered species. How could you say that? I'm <laughs> like... All lions? This looks like a platforming job. For later. <laughs> and the gorilla. I can get like one shot on the gorilla. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's a closer ledge than expected. Oh my gosh, these gorillas are gonna ruin my day. The worst part is that there's, there's a fair number of gaps here. Get, get, gorilla, get, gorilla. There you go. First try. Uh, there's a ledge up there, but that's got a door. But do I go in the door? Because that's kind of... Well, you definitely don't go down there, I'll tell you that. Um, might as well just climb up to the door, see what's up. I love this ledge, it's just a little... <laughs> you can't go, you can't go! You can't go. I can't jump. <laughs> it wouldn't let me go right. And it's a little too high, so... Who knows what the game wanted me to do. Okay, well... It ain't that way. I can't... Can it? There's, yeah, there's a bit of height at the end there. So that seems quite clear that you gotta, you know, get the key. Um, so in that case, it must be down this way where the lion came from. Cool. The one, one lever. There we go. Alright. Yeah, no, I've 
I guess one thing, uh, in the search of finding new games, I've definitely like gone, okay, well, there's these big AAA games I've got to play, but a lot of them take a long amount of time. And I've definitely been like, okay, like, it's nice to play big AAA games, but it's also like, man, you know, like, they do take a real, real long amount of time, so. Which is why I guess I'm playing this game, isn't it? Like, it's a game that I know that is only going to take me, uh, at least a, a couple of streams, a handful of streams. Uh, might be four at this rate. I wasn't expecting four, but sure. Uh, key. Why not? But that's okay. Uh, yeah. Someone actually asked me, um, uh, of like, oh, you know, you should basically use your... That's a sound. That sounds like a secret, but is that even a secret? That just seems like the, the way to go. It's just over there. <laughs> Bro, I don't even remember this level at all. I don't know what's going on. I do it for the med kit. Alright, what's going on in here? I remember- now I remember this room. So yeah, there's these four pillars, and these doors. And you've got this one, like, pushy block here. So what you can do is that you can move the pushy block. To open some of the doors. So I think just depending on which which block has the pushy block on it. I think that's one of them, yeah. So here one of the doors open. And it's a gorilla room! <laughs> Yet again, more gorilla rooms. Why not? Come on. <laughs> you know what's good about a gorilla room? There's only one gorilla in it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, that I've, I've definitely found that games that are very long lose my, like, not my motivation, but, uh, the pacing, I worry, like, will get very lost on me. Um, and so I'm, I'm definitely curious, if maybe, maybe I'll just, like, I'll play a bit of shorter games, uh, for the end of the year. There's still another three months left a year. I haven't even, like, looked at the things I have played. Oh, boy. They put a gorilla in this room? There's gorillas in every room. What's going on? There we go. Give me a key. All right. Once more. Uh, I don't even trust myself on this one, to be honest. More gorilla. Where do they keep coming from? This game loves just spawning enemies behind corners or like out of sight. And it's like, where do all these gorillas keep coming from? Because they're that I can see one is just in there. I could, like, that one's a bit clear, but... There we go. Alright. Wait, that's not a gorilla. Uh, it's just the med kit. I'll do it for the med kit. I am, <laughs> there's, a, there's a breath of, of, uh, I was gonna say, breath of the wild. You know, you know what I mean, it's like when a game, like, does take its time, this, this game definitely, like, there's a lot of, lot of, I guess, slow pacing and wandering around. No gorilla? You know exactly what's gonna happen here. 
Look at that. <laughs> they bait you with the small health right there. Because you know, both of those boulders. Alright, so I've got two keys. For two... Oh, this door also open. Okay. Maybe this was a gorilla room. It's a lot of loose items, isn't this? Hmm. Alright, well. With that. Rusty key. On the door. Why not? Followed by, everyone's favorite, a rusty key on the door. And that opens the door. Who would have thunk? Alright. No, I... Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Down I go. Ah. Now I remember how this, this level ended, but uh... Yeah, just how it started and how how we got here. How did we get to this point? Where's my payoff, bro? You know, you've been shooting gorillas for two hours now. Don't worry, there's, I I remember there's a bit of a weird payoff in this level. Um, so you definitely you come down here. We got some weird looking rock textures. I'll tell you that. So it's a lot of descending and a lot of like weird passageway rooms. That's actually, I get this vibe from like Half-Life as well. Like this strange, like surreal, abstract, I'm climbing through just caves constantly. Like the Zen chapters are like this where it's like, and not even that because the Zen chapters are really short. But you know what I mean? Where it's like, this like bizarre bit where you start just finding landmarks in just the strange structures. That, like, someone has constructed. Like, these are all... These are all... Meh. No. Oh. I guess I probably just need to go down anyways. Um, like, you know, someone just plotted out all these bits, but... You know, you're effectively like a cartographer in your mind. You're kind of observing these... Rocky formations. These cliffside formations and going, yeah, like, that's... You know, that's, that's this bit. So I believe this is like a U-bend, but there's a little temple over there. Um, so I think I needed to open up that door first. That was the important part. There's a wide bit of ground. And then you can't just go up to this temple because the door is closed. So that's why uh, opening up the door that's just... I don't know where exactly underneath because... Yeah, some of these water sections start getting very deep, and it's not just like, oh, here's a tunnel. It's like, nah, here's like, yeah, here's like this lanky door that's just all the way underneath. Here we go. Oh, you thought you couldn't get enough of this wall texture, couldn't you? you had to come back for one last hurrah. There we go. I'm going to save my game because I know exactly what's coming up. Alright, so you think you're you think you're in the club. You climb up, you're on the ledge. And then they're like, ooh <laughs> What's going on here? And suddenly this like centaur thing. I believe that's actually the, the name of it. Look at woo, woo, <laughs> He just shoots missiles at you! This fleshy centaur, and then you shoot it and it blows up. <laughs> All his limbs come off, and it just blows up. It's amazing. It's amazing. It just happens. It happens so quick, you don't even realize it's happening. And then you think you're like, oh, that was the boss. A little late for the prize giving, no? Still, it is the taking part which counts. So finally, after all this time, you can finally kill this guy. Well, I'm glad I used a health kit right there. So, you kill him, and he finally drops a key. Worth it. Uh, with the key, I believe... Oh, do I have to climb up? You do have to climb up. Nice. Ah! 
I guess, like, they do show, like, the other guys climbing ledges. They don't show them necessarily jumping, like, longer gaps, but... At least the people you're up against are, you know, moderately, like, on your level. Uh, I also notice a little lovely health kit over here. Again, I do it for the medkits. Gotta free those medkits. Well, fortunately with that, the level ends. Here lies Tohoken, one of the two just rulers of Atlantis, who even after the curse of the continent had tried to keep rule here in these barren other lands. He died without child and his knowledge has no heritage. Look over us kindly to Hoken. Well, that's a level. I don't know where she gets this vision from, but sure. It off. I like these silhouette cutscenes, it kind of hides a lot of the, the low model kind of effect of it. That's an amazing explosion if it knocked all the pizzas. I said pizzas. Knocked all these pieces way on the other side of the earth. Well, fortunately that gives her a great idea of where it is. And, uh, yeah, we're just dropped right into Egypt, where the, the game will continue in the next stream. I think it's been a fairly long stream on this one, but I'm glad uh, you guys have uh, been watching and enjoying this. And, uh, hold on, let me, let me go back to the main menu. This is the important part. There we go. So, that's all the grease levels. No more grease, but you're probably going to still get way more water. Anyways, with that... I would like to thank you all for watching. I hope you had a, a great time watching this. Uh, me wandering around, getting lost, pulling boxes, shooting rats, shooting crocodiles, shooting alligators, shooting lions, one fleshy centaur, and this one guy. It's the same guy the entire time. Amazing. Uh, to show my channels, I just, I'm on YouTube and Twitch, and that's it. of this that will be on YouTube soonish unless you watch this on YouTube in which case there's no part of the YouTube because the YouTube is the part. Uh, other than that, I hope every one of you has a wonderful week up ahead, the beginning of October, the beginning of spooky season, where I will proceed to just have a munchlax with a pumpkin on its head in the corner instead of really anything substantial that means really anything as part of the season, but that's okay. Anyways, have a good one, eat your greens, and stay safe everyone.